Hello again and uh, welcome back to our ELEC 2540 uh, lab experiment. Um, just a few things, it took me uh, let's see, six hours to download the last video uh, down to my YouTube channel. Um, these are massive files and I don't know whether it's because the internet was slow or everybody else is using the internet, not too sure what's going on. Um, but um, in order to try and give you uh, the best quality, um, then these are HD uh, files. So as I said, there's an enormous amount of information. Uh, and also, um, just apologise for the, the quality of the uh, last two uh, videos, because uh, my laptop, um, I haven't got any screen capture on my laptop, and also the major problem is it doesn't have a... Um, it doesn't allow me to put my Rode uh, lapel microphone into the laptop, which is a real problem. And, and so I'm trying to maintain audio quality whilst I'm doing this. And so in order to maintain the audio quality, what I've done is I, when I'm making the uh, last two videos, I've actually put my laptop through to my big screen television through the HDMI cable and then videoed the television. But the for whatever reason, the light levels, I can't uh, increase the light levels in the flat, which would probably help, um, but I don't have a studio type environment, so it's a bit of a problem. Um, and so uh, it's trying to be so like, it's, it's all a compromise in trying to get the best quality, but with the <laughs> cheapest amount of uh, equipment, and so or the cheapest uh, equipment I can find. Um, so, uh, so that's possibly one of the reasons why the video is a little bit on the dark side, but ultimately I had looked at it and it does look okay in terms of, at least you can see what's, uh, what's going on. So I do apologize for that. I wish it was as clear as my PC, my, lap, uh, my uh, laptop uh, screen, um, but it's a compromise trying to get the audio quality up, uh, which I think is just as important. So, um, so what we're doing now is we've set up the experiment. Uh, so I now have my uh, compass unit here, which you can see just slowly rotating, uh, compass control unit, which is here, my oscilloscope set up, and the camera is focused primarily on the compass unit and the oscilloscope, because I want to try and uh, allow you to see as much of this information as possible. And I don't know how well this is gonna come out, but we're just gonna have to do it, because this is all I've got to, uh, to make this work. Uh, without having an editing studio and everything else. So, um, so I've got uh, the uh, MTTY software, terminal emulation software connected uh, to the box here. So I can now see, uh, I, I can see all the options that are available to me to control the system. Uh, you should be aware of this from uh, the uh, video we did yesterday. We looked at the software and we saw how the HMI was created and the messages that come up and uh, also refer to your ELEC 2540 uh, lab notes as well on this because all of this will all make sense when you uh, when you correlate it with that. So this is the initial state. So this is from power up and I've got the scope connected to the trigger output um, here which uh, allows me to uh, look at the uh, calibration frequency of the oscillator inside the uh, PIC 16F1779. Now what you'll notice is that the compass is slowly rotating. So that suggests that the pulse width, although it has been set to 1500 uh, microseconds or 1.5 milliseconds, what you'll notice is on the screen here, this is meant to be 500 hertz, but in fact it's not, it's actually 499.2 hertz, which means it's running slow. So uh, we need to actually um, increase the frequency of the uh, RC oscillator inside the micro. So I'm going to select option number one uh, on my terminal, uh, which is to the right of you. And I've got the options here of either going negative to reduce the frequency or positive to increase the frequency. We need to increase the frequency. So I'm just going to show you what happens when I actually make it negative. So if I actually reduce the frequency to make this number even smaller, yes, uh, so it's, um, uh, let's just do that now. So we're going to go minus. You'll notice that the servo speeds up, which makes perfect sense because the uh, PWM is controlled by the micro and all the timers are based on uh, on the internal RC uh, oscillator. So if that is not exactly the right frequency, then the PWM isn't correct, and this is exactly what's going on here. So I'm actually going to go in the opposite direction. I'm going to increase the frequency. We're now at 497.6, um, and so um, we're just going to now increase this, and 
uh, we've got 500 uh, around about 500.1 Hertz here yep so let's go positive 501.1 Hertz that looks good I just want to check something a minute whilst I'm here yep that's good um, <clears throat> so uh, so that's uh, looking uh, good for fixing it so we're now uh, I'm going to exit that now and press X to exit so we've got uh, 500.1 uh, Hertz here which is as close as we're still like going to get um, uh, within the tuning capability of the microcontroller but that's fine and you notice that the servo is still turning maybe not as fast as it was turning but it is actually still turning and this is the reason we have option number two which is also to adjust the servo null point so I'm going to go to option number two and adjust the servo null point and when I do that I've got the option to a negative to reduce the PWM and a positive to increase the PWM so let's just uh, oh it's just stopped uh, right okay so I'm going to uh, increase it so I'm going to press plus and you'll notice this, as I press the plus, it's actually increasing the PWM and it's going faster and faster. And now if I put the minus sign in, which I'm doing now, and I keep on pressing minus, it's slowing it all down at a point where it now stops. Now I'm going to count how many minuses it takes before it starts going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11, about 11 pol uh, minuses to get it to go in the opposite direction. Well, that means that if I now put five pluses in, then I've got it in pretty much the midpoint position. So I'm going to put five pluses in. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. And that's now set my null point of the servo. And I'm going to press X to exit. And uh, that's looking good. So what we're now going to do is we're going to test the DAX. Uh, which is option number three. So I'm now going to put my scope probe onto channel number one. This is one, two, three, and four. And I'm going to put my scope onto auto, uh, sorry, onto this on normal mode. That's good. Um, and let's just trigger that. That's okay. And so there we go, onto auto, so that I can actually see this scanning all the time. Uh, so because I don't want to see a trigger here, I want you to see what's actually physically coming out of the of these um, uh, out of the channels. So we're going to uh, select option number three and we're going to test the DAX. So now you'll see uh, the scope is uh, line here is moving up and down, but we're on two volts per division. Now, this signal, as you well know from what we talked about in the last two videos, um, this is a, an output which is um, basically plus and minus 1.25 volts well we need to increase our um, vertical here so I'm going to increase that to one volt per division and now half a volt per division and now we'll see the signal goes from plus 1.5 there's our zero line in the middle here and we're going to plus 1.25 and minus 1.25 which is great and it's working well so let's see if we can close up the time base so that we can actually see it more as a a triangle slash sawtooth type waveform so there we go and it takes when you slow down time base to this sort of level it uh, takes uh, quite a few seconds for it to actually uh, show the image on the screen so there we go and that's looking good so we've got positive 1.25 negative 1.25 here so that's doing exactly what it should now all the channels are doing the same thing so i'm just going to test that all the other channels are actually doing what they should and i'm just going to put this onto channel two and make sure that's working and that's looking good uh channel three that's also looking good just let it run through one more time there it goes and finally uh channel four and that's also looking great fantastic all right now then I'm going to leave it on channel 4 because channel 4 uh, gives me the actual compass position um, when it's um, uh, at any point in time so uh, I'm going to exit from this test and I'm going to go X to exit and that should have stopped and now because we're on uh, auto mode the scope is going to scan now what it's telling me here is 
it's seeing this uh, compass um, at a positive, uh, this is just under one volt. Um, so it's not far off south, which is rather interesting. So let's actually move to go to option number four and actually move the compass to the north position. So I'm going to type in option number four and now it's uh, moving to north position. And there we go. And you'll notice now the north position is actually producing a zero volts. There's my reference in the middle of the screen. And so that's the north position. So now if I go to um, uh, five, option number five, to put it in the southerly position, I'm going to put five. I'm going to rotate that. And now you'll see it moving in. Now, this transition that occurs here before it disappears, um, this is the transition between the south negative side and the south positive side. And so you get this uh, sharp edge because it's going from plus 180 degrees to minus 179.9 degrees. So it's that transition point that you'll get there. We'll see that in more detail uh, shortly. I'm going to move it back to the north position. So let's just go back to uh, option number four and we'll now see it along here. And once again, we'll see when the scope updates, you'll see it's gone back to zero volts here, which is the north position. And if I now put it back to the south position, so I'm pressing number five, option number five, and there you can see it moving to that position. Great, and it's actually gone through the transition as well. So it can either be positive 1.25 or minus 1.25, just depends on that fine uh, positioning. So, um, so what we're now going to do is we're going to take option number six and we're going to rotate the uh, compass in a clockwise direction. Now, if I uh, put, uh, let's see, so option number six. Now, option number six allows me, it says on here, um, uh, offset value in milliseconds. That's actually incorrect. That should be the offset, uh, offset value in microseconds. So I need to update the software. I'm gonna make a note of that. Um, milliseconds to microseconds. Right. Um, and it gives me the option of putting in 1 to 500. Well, as we know about the uh, servos, that uh, we have a 1.5 millisecond center uh, pulse uh, period uh, or pulse time, and we actually want to go uh, around that by 500 microseconds in a positive direction, 500 microseconds in a negative direction, and that um, uh, will give us our uh, speed control for the servo. So I'm going to uh, type in an offset value of 30. So it should now rotate and it's rotating in a clockwise direction. And you'll see on the screen the ramping. So this is it. If we just follow this through, uh, just wait for it to update. The center line, remember, is north. There's north, it's coming up to south, dropped through south and come back up. And so it's going round and round and round. Okay, now then, if I increase the offset value to 50, it'll go faster. So now you can see it very clearly doing that transit through the south position, and there's the north position in the center. And the frequency has actually started um, to increase. That's 476 uh, millihertz. Okay, and if I now go to 100, you'll see the uh, angles change to, on the scope. And the frequency is now 758 uh, millihertz. Okay, and now notice the speed now at 100. So this is an offset of 100 microseconds on the servo. Remember? Now, one would assume this is a linear device. Now, just take a note of how fast that's going, right? But now if I go to 500, which is the maximum offset, it's not going five times as fast. And that's really, really interesting because it just shows you that the servo actually is a, not a linear device. And this is really important when you come to understand uh, these uh, control systems because you've got to understand the hardware that's driving this so that you can actually make your algorithms as good as possible. This whole experiment is restricted by what we're doing with the servo, so we just have to live with what we've got here. But as engineers, 
uh, and you're, if you're designing a PI or PID control system, you'll be wanting to know this information because it helps guide you in your software and how you go about approaching uh, problems and also what you would expect to see happen. So understanding transfer characteristics of mechanical components is really, really important or electromechanical components. So I'm now just going to uh, stop this. Um, this has been going in a clockwise direction. I'm just going to put zero in, which is the exit. So it now stops. And I'm now going to go in the opposite direction. So we're going to go to seven, which is anti-clockwise. And I'm going to put 30 in uh, as the opposite. Now we're going in the opposite direction, which you can see. And uh, I'm now going to increase this to 50 uh, microseconds. So we're, we're actually uh, putting in um, a, uh, I can't remember whether it's actually a, um, uh, reduce the uh, PWM or increase the BWM, I can't remember now. Uh, so now we're going 50, but we're going in the opposite direction, which is the important bit. And uh, the frequency is increased again. And now we've got 100 microsecond offset. And you'll now see the slopes increased again. And now I'm going to put 500 in. And that's as fast as it can go. So that's as fast as the control system can actually um, uh, drive the uh, mechanism. So uh, it's a limitation of the actual um, of the actual device. And so there is a limit to how fast this whole system can actually respond because of actually how the servo works. So I'm just going to stop that, put in zero. Now what we're going to do in the next video is we are going to um, use the um, instructions six and seven, uh, or in fact, we'll just, we can only choose, we'll choose one of them actually, might as well just choose um, six and rotate the compass clockwise. And we're gonna characterize our servo by looking at the frequency, uh, the offset versus the frequency to determine how linear this device is. We know it's not linear, but does it actually have any linear component to, for part of the range or whatever. So we're going to actually look at that. Now remember we're on a one-to-one -one ratio at the moment. Uh, this is how this was set up. But what I'm going to do is characterize it um, for the different pulley systems. And you'll see there is a correlation between all of these, or there should be. And uh, so we should see that, but at least you can correlate it um, from a ratio of two to one, one to one, and one to two. And then we can actually look at that. So I'll do that as our next video, which will be under the uh, title of, um, of um, transfer characteristics for the servo. Okay.